You're listening to episode number 63. Welcome to the Inner Singer Podcast. Providing tools and techniques to strengthen your inner singer, your beliefs, your confidence, your mindset. And now, your host for the Inner Singer Podcast, Mike Goodrich. Well, hey there, everybody. This is Mike Goodrich with the Inner Singer Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm thrilled to be doing this again. You know, uh, this one's coming a little bit more of a distance between the last one and this one than I wanted there to be, but I've been real busy with some some really fun, cool ideas that I think we'll um, I'll bring you up to speed on as at, at some point because at some point I, I want to get everybody's ideas about some of the things that I have planned. Um, but they're exciting to me anyway, right? So that's fun. Anyway, thrilled to have you here. Want to do a little just a short podcast today. You know, I know I say that all the time and then it ends up going long, but I have a feeling this will be a little bit shorter. I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter because I like that to be the new format a little bit because then I feel like I can get more, I can get more out to you. So anyway, let's get started with this. I hope you're all well. I hope you're better than well. I hope you're doing great, actually. I hope your singing is going beautifully and your inner singer is supporting you with, uh, with dialogue and inspiration that is supportive to you. We want to get that inner singer on our side, right? Because um, that's like an iceberg. That's the under part. The inner singer is the part we don't see. Oftentimes the part we're not aware of. And of course, that's the purpose for this whole podcast. So, you know, if your inner singer is not on your side, then we've got 62 podcasts before this with uh, tips and ideas and techniques and tools and strategies to help you get your inner singer on your side so that we can really not be ruled by a, an unconscious wiring that we're not even aware of. So having said that, let's jump in and have a little fun today. You know, I want to talk a little bit about my interpretation and my, um, oh, the kind of the way that I would teach the old 80-20 principle. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Pareto's 80-20 principle, meaning usually they talk about it, or oftentimes they talk about it in, in business or, you know, different circles. And uh, basically it is that, and it's really tested quite a bit, that 20% of your effort yields 80% of your results. And so when they're talking about it in business and things like that, then they say, what are the 80%, what's the 80% of things that you're doing that are, that are yielding the remaining 20%? And get rid of those. Get somebody else to do that and just do the 20% because that's yielding 80% of your results, right? And that makes, that makes sense from a time constraint, right? That we do what is working for the majority of the time. And let me kind of put that into the singing world for us right now because the way I look at that is this. First of all, let me tell you a quick little, a very, very quick story. When I first started teaching, it was, uh, it, it was, this is funny, actually. I first started teaching back in about 91. I think that's the first time I ever took money for a lesson, a voice lesson, was in 1991. So that's 26 years ago. That's a long time. So I've got quite a bit of experience doing this and, um, and taken in, a, you know, an, a decent amount of money <laughs> having done it. But the first time, uh, the first few lessons, probably for, you know, a month or two, I was really conscious of uh, wondering if people liked my teaching, if they felt like they were getting value, if they felt like they were getting anything out of it. Of course, I still feel that way, but, you know, but now, luckily, I have the confidence and the, the track record to, to know that they're getting something out of it. So, but back then, you know, I, I thought they were, I thought I was doing pretty well. I thought they were getting something out of it, but I would always ask this question at the end of the lesson. I would say, so, how did it feel today? How was how how was your lesson? Did you did you did you enjoy it? That was my main thing. You know, did you enjoy it? Did you have fun? And it's so funny because for the first month, the common responses were two. Either the first one, the first response, and these always surprised me. And then you know when I found out what was going out and you know out on out in the singing world. Um, it began to not surprise me. And I, I started hearing it, you know, all too many times. But the two answers I would get are these. Person would say, well, yeah, it didn't hurt. And I would just kind of laugh and shake my head and say, well, I, well, that's good. I guess that's really good that it didn't hurt. You know, that's, 
That's certainly a step in the right direction. The other one was, well, yeah, you didn't make me cry. And so, you know, and I, I, that one would always make me laugh. And I'd say, okay, well, that's, yeah, that's probably really good because the two things that I really want least for you in a lesson is for it to hurt physically or for you to just start crying because you're so upset that I'm, you know, driving you crazy or something. So I thought, I thought that those were really, really funny. But then, you know, it, what it did, and over the past 26 years, as I have inherited students from, from teachers that, you know, are basically working out their own stuff on their students. They're discouraged or angry about something and taking it out on their students for one reason or another. And they, and of course, you know, most of them don't know they're doing this. And what happens is they begin falling into the trap of doing the exact opposite of, of what I do and what I teach and what I'm talking about, what I'm going to talk about in this podcast. And that is this. When you're singing, when you're vocalizing, I want you, if you don't do this already, I want you to adopt a new philosophy of the 80-20 principle. And what I want you to do is this version of it. I want you to do what works really well for you 80% of the time. And then begin working the other 20% in the 20% that doesn't work so well. So figure out whatever exercises work for you. If you have two or three that work really, really well, that loosen your voice up, that registrate your voice, that get you going, that coordinate the registers, balance everything out, do those most of the time, 80% of the time, and then start sneaking in the other. Now, what I find out there quite a bit, not as much anymore because I've been involved for years in training teachers and some of my buddies and, uh, and colleagues in, in past organizations that are really wonderful teachers have also at that level been training teachers all over the world. So there are literally now, literally hundreds and hundreds of I would say probably pretty darn qualified teachers. They don't have my experience and they don't have some of my friends' experience because they haven't been doing it 26 years. But they're really, really good. And they're affordable, you know? And sometimes I'm really not that affordable. And sometimes my friends aren't that affordable, right? Because they work at a higher level and so do I. But that's not what this is about. What this is about is back in the day before there were really hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of pretty darn good teachers out. There were a lot of really awful teachers, and I'm sure they are now, and nobody's doing it on purpose. And believe me, before I knew what I knew, I, 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 I taught some lessons years and years ago that I didn't take any money for. But I think back now and I think, I should really look these people up and, and apologize to them. Because I was doing just the same old garbage that you hear about and trying to make it work. I didn't know about registers. I didn't know so much I didn't know. So I'm not saying this with a malicious attitude at all. I was right there with them. I didn't know anything. And I still have a, a ton of things to learn. And so, so do my colleagues that are amazing. We keep discovering things all the time. That's one of the fun things about this. But anyway, the point is, what I would find is that these teachers out there would focus 80% of their attention and energy on the student and work on things that were not working well. Hence, the students would oftentimes experience physical pain, and they would also get very upset emotionally, and a lot of them would, would, would react by crying, obviously. That finally taught me, and I began to, to put two and two together and figure out, wow, this is why it hurts them, and this is why they're crying, because they're being beaten up in lessons. They're being hammered 80% of the time with stuff that doesn't work. So they come in to a lesson, whether it's a half hour or an hour. They vocalize. They get a little warmed up, a little loosened up. And then the teacher begins to make them aware of everything that isn't working and hammers away at that. And once they beat that into the ground and it still doesn't work, they go on to something else that isn't working. So... Let's say that they're, they think, the teacher thinks their breathing isn't balanced. So they're working on breathing exercises and they're hammering away on this breathing. The student feels like they're not getting it. 
And maybe it's not breathing at all, but the, the teacher thinks it's breathing. Maybe it's cord closure. Maybe the cords are not closed and they're not resisting the air. So no matter what kind of the breath, no what kind of breathing the person's doing, it's not going to work, right? So, but the teacher is hammering away at this, and the student is getting more and more and more frustrated and negative, and they're tending to beat themselves up more, and their negative self-talk is telling them that oh, I suck, and I'm no good, and I'm never going to get this, and blah blah blah, right? So that doesn't work for a while teacher finally wakes up to that. Well, this is getting discouraging, even to me, they think, right? So on they go to something else that doesn't work. Well, let's work that vibrato for a while. Let's pound away on that for eight or 10 minutes until you're so discouraged you can't even see straight. And now, you know, what else doesn't work? You know, well, let's bang away at that second bridge, those high notes that you're having trouble with. You know, and by the time they go through a half hour, an hour, the student is ready to quit singing. They're so frustrated. And by the time it takes them a week before the next lesson to heal their psychology, to, to, to work themselves up to go back into another lesson, right? And I have heard this countless and countless times. So you, as having complete dominion and control over your own voice, and you should take that, by the way. Don't give it to anybody. Don't give it to me. Don't give it to any teacher. Uh, focus on what works 80% of the time. So... Here's an, here's an idea for you. The next time you vocalize, first of all, do this one thing that seemingly has nothing to do with singing. I want you to take a minute or two before you vocalize, before you sing, before you warm up, whatever you're going to do, right? And I want you to, as trite and simplistic as this sounds, I want you to become aware of your mood, of your attitude. Some people call it state. Be aware, create an awareness of how you are feeling. And then make sure that you, if you're not feeling really enthusiastic and really optimistic and really looking forward to singing, do something on purpose to help direct you into that state or into that attitude. If you're feeling down and you're feeling pessimistic and you think, well, singing will make me feel better. I'll just sing for a while. No, 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 no. Don't bring that to the singing. Take charge of yourself and your brain chemistry. Be mindful. Say, okay, part of me is feeling really discouraged right now, but I know how I can shift into a more optimistic, positive, enthusiastic, joyful place. I have these tools. I can watch this comedy on uh, comedy um, video for five minutes on YouTube. I can listen to this really cool song that always picks me up, and I just love this song. I can think of this person that I love. I can think of this moment in time. I can think of this thing that I'm working towards that excites me. You know what it is. I don't know what it is for you. I know what it is for me. But whatever it is for you, find what it is and use that and Raise your vibration. I know that sounds a little woo-woo, right? But what the heck? I don't care. Be, let's be woo-woo, right? Raise your energetic vibration. Do a power pose. Google power pose. YouTube. Go on YouTube and look at Amy, I think, Cuddles or something like that is her, is her last name. Um, and and, and uh, put in YouTube power poses. And do a power pose for two minutes. You know, stand like Wonder Woman. Or, or Superman, um, and there are, there's some others. Whatever it is, the point is, do something to get yourself into a receptive, enthusiastic, joyful, optimistic, expectant state where you're expecting to have fun, you're expecting to do well. And then design your workout, design your singing, design your vocalization so that you are doing 80% of what works really well. Now, if you're thinking right now, gee, Mike, nothing works really well. I don't have 80% of anything that works well. Well, find out what works best and do that. Or find somebody to help you. And like I say, I know hundreds of teachers all over the entire world that don't charge $300 an hour that can help you. So take a lesson, have a consultation, you know, do something that 
where somebody can help you identify what is working well and then work on that. The principle is work on what works 80% of the time. And from there, sneak in the things that aren't working well. For example, if you're doing an exercise on a vowel like, um, well, we do like mum a lot, right? If we're doing mum, mum, mum. We're doing the arpeggio on mum. And that works really well for you. But let's say no doesn't work. Well, do mum most of the time and then start sneaking mo in. I mean, no in. Or reverse that, whatever works, and then start sneaking it in. Because you want to focus. You want to build the success wiring. You want to build it in your voice. You want to build it in your brain. And you want to stay optimistic and stay enthusiastic and stay positive where you're expecting to be able to actually do this. So don't, you know, the old, the old thing is, oh, we got to work on our weaknesses, work on our weaknesses, work on our weaknesses. And that's what they focus on in school. And don't, get, don't even get me started on our school system. I, I heard somebody say, and I completely agree, if, if, Rip, if Rip Van Winkle, remember the story of Rip Van Winkle, was like slept for 200 years, right, and then woke up, said if Rip Van Winkle were alive today and awakened today out of a 200-year sleep, the only thing he would recognize is our school system. So that's, you know, don't get me started. And if you're a teacher, um, don't get, don't, please don't get offended. So, because so am I, I taught at USC, so believe me. I'm saying this with a little bit of experience. So, but the reason I say that is because we are taught in our school system to focus on things that don't work. And we're not focusing on the things that actually do work. Okay, so I'm getting a little excited. I'll get off my soapbox here. If I get too much higher on the soapbox, I'm not going to be able to reach my microphone. So anyway, but focus on the 80% of stuff that works. That is it for today. Let me know how you like this. Let me know if this serves you. Let me know if it helps you, if it made sense, if it was relevant. And I hope you just have a fabulous week. And I'm going to get another one out because I have some other ideas right now. But I want to wrap this one up. And I think I'm going to do another one right on the heels of this with some other ideas that I have to share with you. So anyway, I will talk to you real, real soon. Take care. Now, run on over if you, you know, I, I know my outro already says this, but um just in case you haven't, I would love to get just an honest rating, an honest review. That's what help people helps people find the podcast. And, you know, I think the more people that can hear this, the better. I really have come to, to believe after 26 years of doing this, it's really interesting. I was teaching one of my students the other day, and it really hit me clearer, more clearly than ever, than ever I can say without the shadow of any doubt, with complete 100% conviction. If you don't have your inner singer on your side and supporting you, it will not be possible for you to reach your vocal potential. And by vocal potential, I don't mean you won't get great high notes. I don't mean you won't have a great vibrato. But if you have a belief system, a wiring, a programming, patterns and habits that are working against your vocal success, no matter how good you ever get vocally, you'll figure out a way not to en- how not to enjoy it. And I have seen that happen over and over and over and over again. I stood right next to one of the most famous, phenomenal opera singers. He's not here anymore. Uh, before he went on stage, and I had heard for years that he was absolutely terrified to go on stage. And I could tell by looking at him that he was terrified to go on stage. This guy had one of the best voices that ever graced our planet, ever. And the career was, as far as I'm concerned, all too short-lived. And my suspicion is that it was because he just had so little joy in being able to get out there and do it. And there are countless stories that I could tell you, but I'm not going to waste your time right now. Just take my word for it on this. You probably know this anyway. That's why you're here. But anyway, I will see you or hear. I will. You will hear from me. I will not see you. Maybe I will see you, but uh, you'll hear from me in the next podcast. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Inner Singer Podcast. And please share this with all of your singing friends. And head on over to iTunes and subscribe. And if you found it of value, give us a nice rating. Thanks so much.